I will be reading uh, Matthews chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And then the multitudes, he went up and he went up a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inhabit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against and against you falsely for my sake. May the Lord have a read, blessed to read of his word. May be seated. Lord, we come in, Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your tender mercy. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity and Father, Lord, Jesus, to be able to approach your throne in heaven. Lord, give us a mind and set in heaven, Father, you to be able to do your will, Father. And Lord, we ask you, Father, Lord, to bless this morning, and Father, service, Lord. Give us a mind to be able to say yes to your will, Lord. And Lord, let your will be done in our lives, and Father. Lord, we ask you, Father, Lord, to bless, and Father, the sick and the shut in your Father. Lord, remember the bereaved family, Lord, you this morning, Heavenly yes, Father. Lord. Because, Heavenly Father, Lord, neither they need comfort, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. And only you can do that comfort, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. To comfort their minds, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And give them, Heavenly Father, Jesus, peace in their mind, Lord. Yes. In your mighty name, Jesus. Yes. Lord, continue, Heavenly Father, Jesus, that will bless each and every one of us this yes. morning, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. And give us, Heavenly Father, a mindset, Heavenly Father, Jesus, to praise your name, Lord. And you give glory and honor to you, Lord, because yes, you've been so Lord. good to us. Yes, you you bless us, Heavenly Father, Jesus, with blessings from on high, Heavenly Father. Yes. And Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessings, Heavenly Father. Look at you, Heavenly Father, Jesus, have a blessing, Heavenly Father, our homes, Heavenly Father. Yes, you make our homes all the peace and, and not our uh, homes of confusion, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes. Look at you, Heavenly Father, you have a guide us, Heavenly Father, in the way you have us to go, Lord. Yes. In your mighty name, you for your sake, Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. Salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is almighty, the Lord our God is omnipotent.
It's amazing what praises can do. It's amazing what praises can do. It's amazing what praises can do. Oh, 
And one of the parts I love in the song when it says, although my weary eyes yeah. can't see. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, Father. We're looking for better days. Yes. Yeah. And better days are coming. Amen. Yeah. 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 But the human mind said, so that can take so long. Yeah, that's your message. That's but as the song says, while I'm waiting, I won't complain. And I pray all the time. It's, you know, the song says I won't complain, but we find ourselves, <laughs> you know, every day complaining. But I'm asking God to give me strength to where I don't complain and try to accept what He has for me. Um, I just want to say thank Cedar Grove so much for coming out on yesterday. I saw you all, I had a big smile on my head. There's my family. I thank you all. I truly thank you all. I know yesterday, uh, when I walked in, I felt good, got excited, and the drilling was running real good, and I sat in the chair, and, kept, and they kept getting up, and probably about the fifth time, my back started tightening up, and Burning, I said, I think I better sit down. And <laughs> but when the spirit of God is in the place, yeah, yeah. you know, even though you're in pain, your mind yeah. don't reflect on the pain. Yeah. Your mind reflects on how God has delivered, brought you, saved you, yeah. in ways out of no way. So I just thank God how He has blessed me, though I was in an accident, and you know the to me, it wasn't bad, but when I went to go see the truck, I said, yeah, yeah it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> but I was telling the saints on yesterday when I had a chance to talk, I said, this year started off very bad for me. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, with the passing of my son, and uh, you know, going through that whole little situation, death brings out a whole lot of things. Amen. Amen. Things you don't expect to see and hear, and, Whatever, but I, uh, you know, I just thank God for my mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Kept my mom because yeah. that was my first son, firstborn son, mm -hmm. and then plus, I say maybe about eight nine months we had got real close, Amen. real close, and I and it was just you know to get a call and go, hey he's sick wow. and then turn around of like maybe a few weeks later he's gone, wow, very de devastating, yeah. and then turn around. Take my wife to work. Amen. You know, I said, let me go. Cause I've been a problem with my eyes. I, I have I had well, I have a glaucoma, had a glaucoma surgery in one eye, and then they're telling me I have in the other eye. So I had to go through these different tests and things like that to avoid from doing this, the surgery again. Mm -hmm. And my father, my father, the bishop kept saying, maybe God don't want you to have the surgery. Yeah, and my mind was saying, well, let me go see, you know, go through the tests and stuff and see what's going on. <laughs> and each time I would try to go, something happened. Uh -huh. And that, that Friday, I said, well, let me go on and get there early because I'm going to a different location and I just want to, you know, be, get there early and maybe I can sit down and read and study. Well, that's what I've been doing lately. I get somewhere early, I try to read and study. And there was a friend way that man just bogarted while I get on the on ramp. I said, what is he doing? <laughs> and normally I was like, okay, well, let me go on and just, hey, I'm gonna stop you from getting it. And something said, just relax. Yeah. I relaxed. And he kept coming over. And once I got a chance to, to get over, I said, let me go and get out of his way because I don't know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Got over and God blessed me to stop. Because when I got over, I just, the traffic stopped yeah. me on the freeway. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw him coming over. I'm like, I know he he's not gonna come over because he has no room. And I'm hooking the horn, and, you know, and he just didn't come over and hit me and, and wow. you know, how was it? I know we're human. Yeah. And when bad things happen, <laughs> bad thoughts go through your mind. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and God, even though all this was happening, I started thinking about the blessing of God, because yeah. as he hit me, he was dragging me down the highway. Wow. I wasn't going that, to me, I wasn't, he wasn't going that fast, about 25, 30 miles per hour. Wow. But 
I just, at first I was going to try to fight my way out. Mm -hmm. And I said, nah, let me just, you know, just hopefully he, he could pull away, you know, pull away from me. And once he pulled, and the whole time that he was, you know, pulling me down the highway, I got on the phone. I said, you know what, let me go on and call him. I don't want to operate yeah, let him know yeah, what's going yeah, on. Yeah. And she said, well, just listen, why don't you stay? Be calm. And I said, well, I'm calm. I'm very calm. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand why he's not stopping. And she said, well, a lot of times they don't see you, which I understand. But once he stopped the first time and, you know, put his flash on, I said, well, hey, I'm, <laughs> maybe he's going to get out. But I'm not, because of the traffic, I said, I'm not going to get out. Right. I would rather let him come out. Yeah. He doesn't get out. Mm. He pulls off. Oh, no. And I'm like, oh, no, brother. <laughs> and I started to follow him and go down, and my truck is wobbling back and forth. And I'm like, oh, look, please let me catch you. Because wow. she said, get the license plate. Wow. Got the license plate. We get on the five freeway, and he pulls over. I said, well, he pulls over. You know, I'm getting, you know, calm. He gets out. Why are you following me? Cuts me out. I said, well, hold on, brother. Oh, Lord. What, baby, what's your problem? And I and the old man again is like, don't let him hit you. Don't do yeah. no. Yeah. Be a man. I'm a man, just like you a man. Right. And God, I, I I told this one. I said God kept telling me, stop interfering with what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And I kept hearing this, and it was like just loud in the back of my head, and I'm looking like, mm -hmm. and while he's talking, and, and I'm looking up, and like, why are you saying this? You know, in my mind, what? What? And he's like, and I said what loud? And he said, you know what I said? And I just started laughing. I'm like, I'm not saying what to you. I, I'm saying what to God. I'm like, Lord, this man hit me and, and he's accusing me and this and that. He said, stop interfering with what I'm trying to do amen, for you. Amen, amen. Shut your mouth. Yeah. And I just looked up. I just started smiling. I said, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes. And, I, I, and when I got back in the car, I said, well, you know what? You know, God is in control of everything. Yeah. God knew Amen. this day was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, once you get hit, sometimes you feel pain, sometimes you don't because, you know, yeah. you're so excited and so frustrated or whatever, whatever the situation is, you really don't feel it. Yeah. And I just feel, you know, in my mind, I don't feel nothing. You okay? I'm fine. I'm just upset. Right, right. And as the day went along, this... <laughs> for the old man, I'm full of pain. Yeah. I mean, in my lower back, I mean, bad. I kept saying, oh, God, what is going on? What is it? And I didn't want to go to the hospital. I waited. And all of a sudden, that's the worst thing you can do is wait. Amen. Amen. Don't, Amen. Wait. Don't yes. wait. You go right Amen. there. Because yes. the, the, whatever's on the inside, it's something major. And, the, and they were looking, trying to figure out about, you know, uh, bleeding on the inside or cracked bones in the back and all that, whatever. And men, a lot of men, I'm not say every man, every man, but men are hard headed when it comes to amen, health and fucking doctors and things like that. I'm one of them. I just hate to be cut on be cut off for so much. It's like yeah. I'd rather, you know, let me call the advice nurse and let <laughs> them try to advise me on what it's the right thing to do before I get there because I, you know, my brain goes straight. They gonna keep you in here for three or four days and this and that. So don't go. Just call on the phone. Amen. And sometimes they told me it, it's not time to call on the phone. Amen. It's time to get there and let them do what they need to do. Amen. So I just thank God for His. I claim the hill. Yes. You know, I, I, I just, I just know now. I gotta take my time. Amen. Uh, I'm gonna read. Luke the 18th chapter. Uh, I'm going to start with verse 9 and then go down to, I believe it's 18. Uh, 14. Luke the 18th chapter, verse 9. And he spake this parable unto a certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised, righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one Pharisee and the other publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus, 
with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, as other men are. Uh, I'm sorry. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as the public, as this, as this publican. Verse 12. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off will not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smoke upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Verse 14, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. You may be seated. I read this, uh, well, I was, this is one of our lessons as a child, uh, the parables in the Bible. Uh, one of my teachers, uh, which we have Sabbath school, uh, was teaching us this. And this right here, it, it the actual scripture and how Jesus was explaining, it's about our mindset. Mm -hmm. My father used to always tell me that we have, it's about your intentions, yeah. your desires. Yeah. This Pharisee, Pharisees have this thing where, well, during that time, they knew the law, and they taught the law. Yes. So they put themselves in a certain category, I would want to say, where they are, they were better Amen. than other people. Amen. And his prayer was basically just not asking God to heal him, bless him, and things like that. But he just, he started off being merciful, then everything up and started putting down other people. Mm -hmm. And he thought he was right because of his status. Yes. And I tell people this all the time. Some people look at it, but you don't, you don't have to say that, Pastor. Huh. I say it because I want people to understand that pastors are human. Amen. Right. Pastors Amen. make mistakes. Yes. We're human. Yes. Yes. Right. Some of us know the word. Some of us don't know yes. We know a, a, some portion of the word, but we don't know everything. Amen. But God give us what to say and how to do if you yield to him. Amen. If you spend your time communicating with him, guess what? He will help you along the way. Amen. He words you. I, I, I pray this every day. I said, Lord, please bless me, guide me, hmm. protect me, word my mouth. Yeah. Because I used to have a habit of talking what they call junk. Mm, amen. Or I felt that if you disrespect me in words, then I feel that, hey, I'm going to put you in your place while you're trying to put me in my place. Hallelujah. That was my mindset. Yeah. And, you know, most young people now, at 18, I'm considered an adult. So I'm going to, I'm an adult like you're an adult. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to do this. So that was my mindset. And then as I got older, it's, you know, you start reading and studying. Sometimes you read and study, you gotta be careful of the knowledge that you receive. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you read and study, as you get all this information, you get the big head. Amen. And you Amen. forget where you come from. Hallelujah. So as I was reading this, I thought about this Pharisee, mm -hmm. how his mindset was. I'm the man. So I know the law, I'm, I'm, I'm it. They come to me for knowledge and understanding. Yeah. And Lord, this man right here, he didn't say this per se, but he's like, he's nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And Jesus was saying, now, this publican over here, mm -hmm. he's he like, where about him? Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. We come here 
I tell people, you're coming for the wrong reason. Amen, yeah. amen. I was taught this as a child. The church, the building, and North City Grove, and whoever named on the title and everything else, whatever, amen. this is still God's house. Amen. This building is set aside for Him. Yes, we come and we worship, but guess what? Everybody who owns a home, rent a home, or is the head of a home have rules. Amen. Amen. Rules and bylaws. My dad used to tell me, son, when you come in here, okay, how, whatever, you speak. Hallelujah. And sometimes I, when I got over, I said, well, hey, I was up first. <laughs> I just said it, but that's what I felt. <laughs> I was up first before him. So I took that like, well, I'm going to see if he's going to speak first. <laughs> I was sitting there, and he, he said that we watching the game. Then he just flipped the TV off. I'm like, what's up? What is that? About 30 minutes. He's like, what's me? I said, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. In my mind, I said, I was up first. <laughs> I don't know not to say it. But I'm like, yes, sir. He said, I'm the head of this home. So you honor and respect me. Right. Then when you get your home, mm. and I come and visit, I'm going to honor and respect you. Yes. But you don't think in your mind, like, but that's pop. That's pop. So no matter what, but my father honored and respect my home. Yeah. Amen. Now, my home, even though I consider it the head, I was also taught and helped when I was the first lady. Amen. <laughs> first lady Amen. runs the house. Yeah. But everybody has rules. Amen. So even though that I may be the pastor or whoever, I can visit, I still got to. Obey the rules of that home. Amen. Amen. So when I come to church, you know, see the Road Baptist or Grace Temple, whoever it is, it's still God's house. Yeah. And there are certain things that I cannot do. Mm -hmm. Even my mindset is like this: even though I come to a, 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 a temple, and some people are doing whatever they're doing, whatever the temple, whatever, I go straight to. Them. I have to honor him. I have to honor and respect him. Because I'm in his house. He's looking. And I'm in, I want his blessings. Yeah. I want, when I come into this house, not leave the outside, I want his covering. Yeah. I want his blood over me. Yeah. As my daughter said yesterday, some of us were in our beds early in the morning. And, you know, this citizen app, I put it on my phone. Sometimes I said I should do. Because once something happens, if your phone sent a notification. Man. And I'm pretty sweet, and the phone it kept going off. And I kept saying, who's texting me early in the morning? But I used to just look at my phone, and I would see so much devastation mm -hmm. that was yeah. going on. Yeah. Where people are outside or whatever else, and they something happened, accidents or whatever else, and they tape it. Yesterday morning, Right there on 70, I think it was 78 or 79 in Hoover, my daughter said, Dad was asking over there. And I'm like, okay. So I, I'm, I'm trying to find my phone, couldn't find it. She comes with her phone, and she's showing me the phone. And first thing I saw, I thought about, I said, Lord, I thank you for your mercy upon me. I was yeah. an accident. Yeah, yeah. I was hit by 18 Wooler. Yeah. And, and you know, they, like I said, to me, it wasn't that bad, but learning and, and watching and, and going, you know, trying to do research. 18 bullets going 25 miles per hour mm. is like it's going 75 miles per hour. Because yeah. yeah. it takes yeah. them a while to stop. Right. Plus, that's tons mm. of weight. Yes. And then, well, when I told my brother, he said, well, well the truck bouncing and was driving. I said, bouncing. <laughs> because it's bouncing, I mean, it's empty. But it wasn't bouncing, I mean, it has cargo. I said, no, it wasn't bouncing. He said, well, guess what? Whatever the weight of that truck, plus what was inside, that was a lot of weight. Yeah. But I said, Lord, I, I thank you for your mercy Amen. that you restored for me. Because yeah. yeah. that car was not on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the picture while the person was videotaping. And from one end of the car, the passenger side, where I was hit on the passenger side, was smashed all the way over to the driver's side. Wow. And the lady expired. Wow. And I'm sitting there watching the video. And people are saying, oh, that was Susan. That, no, not Susan, Susan, so please forgive me. They were saying, that's Miss so and so and so. Oh, she was a good lady. Oh, she was a. And I just thought, well, I said, she did not expect this Amen. this morning. Amen. Wherever she was going, 
she just probably thought, I'm gonna go to my different desk, my, my right. where I'm going. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm gonna get there safely. Yes. And then get back home to my family. Yes. But we don't know. That's right. That's right. So that's why we should pray and ask God, Lord, protect. Some people say yeah. it's something minor. It is not minor. Yeah. It's no guarantee you won't wake up. Amen. It's no guarantee that I'm, I'm going to get up and have the full activity of my limbs. Yeah. My son, I talked to him and he was like, hey, Pop, how you doing? We were laughing and talking and all of a sudden, I called him and all of a sudden, Pops, not doing good. What you mean? So I tell him, I got COVID, got pneumonia, I got this, everything, it's not good. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. So, we expect we take life for granted. We take God and judge you. I'm letting go. This is an everyday thing. He just going to wake us up. Yeah. Yeah. And, but when you look back on what you did the day prior, yeah. do you really deserve to wake up? Yeah. Do you really deserve to get the things that, you're, that God is blessing you with? Amen. No! Because no. every day, yes. my dad used to give him a prayer. He says, and I, I said, no, hold up. He's the pastor. Why is he praying this? Mm -hmm. Lord, please forgive me for the things that I've done and things I don't have knowledge that I did. Yeah, man. That's we, just like, just like the Pharisee. Sometimes we're self-righteous. We think because of who we are, our status. Yeah. We're it. I'm mm -hmm. here every Sunday. Yeah. I pay my, just like, like, like you said, I pay my time. I give off. I do all this. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm it. Amen. But this part of me like, Lord, it's just me and you. Uh -huh. First lady had this, this thing that she was saying over uh, when, we, when we first started about God issues. Uh -huh. mm. And we would come here, service would start at 2 o'clock, and she would have us come at least for like 10 minutes before time. Amen. And just a one-on-one, -on -one, you and God, we would just come to the altar. Okay. Some would sit in the chair, however you want to, and you just sit there talking and asking God to heal those God issues. God issues are major problems Amen. that you don't see no way out. Amen. Lord, just me and you. I, I, I need, this is what I was taking from this public. Lord, it's just me and you. Yes, Lord. I'm, I'm not even worried about him. Mm. Not in a disrespectful way, but right now, it's just me and you. I need you. Yeah. I need you to help me. Yeah. Help my problem. Yeah. But we're coming in here. Well, did is brother so and so here? Uh, and our mind is going wondering why something is going on. I wonder why they're here. I'm, I'm, I wonder what they're doing. Uh -huh. Maybe they're at Disneyland. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder they're having a good time. Yeah. And as you just start wondering, you'd have missed what God has for you. Amen. We're thinking that the word of God is the only thing that we're going to receive a blessing from. Yeah. But God showed me one time, we have testimony service where we, we have, the saints get up and they testify about the blessings that God had blessed them or bestowed yeah. them with during the week. Yes. Cause we don't know what God has done for you. Cause a lot of times we don't even communicate with each other. Amen. Huh? Amen. Until we come to church. Yeah. We don't even call a hey, brother so and so. How you doing today, man? You know how was your week? Mm -hmm. If we call, we we we're. Sometimes we've just been messy. My mm. Lord. Mm. Uh -huh. But we don't take the time instead to try to see how each other are doing doing yeah. it. Uh -huh. Amen. Yet alone, when we come to church, try to figure out, man, are they looking at me funny? Why are they looking at me? They said we're laughing. Now you probably, they're like me. I, I, uh, Mike asked, you guys went over to pray, and I'm trying to get up, I hit my. I, I bump into my wife's knee, then I bang my knee on the other side, I hit my leg on the other I said, oh, Jesus, oh, oh. And, but my mindset was like, who, who looking to try to see if I bump my knee? But if I kept looking around trying to see, and if I would call somebody laughing, man, they laughing at me. Oh, man, dude. Sometimes people are not even thinking about you. It's you that has a problem. <laughs> and he was saying that they, the question was who is giving the most 
sincere prayer. Amen. See, a lot of times because of what we say, how we pray, yeah. and you know, I'm using these big words, and oh, that's gonna be, ah. <laughs> Amen. And God is gonna hear our prayer. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's gonna hear me because of our ah, and all that stuff. <laughs> God knows what you're saying, even if you're in a tomb or not in a tomb. Amen. Amen. He knows what you're saying when you just talk to him. Amen. You don't have to use no big words or whatever. How do you use big words? You don't even know what the word means. Yeah. <laughs> and even the preacher using the big words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. I was doing a study, I was trying to study, and because it kept bothering me about. Now my dad, when he was when I was young, he had a, a lot of people. So we had different people who speak. And a lot of the young ministers, they would watch other ministers on TV, whatever else. And they were trying to use these big words or whatever. Amen. And I watch a lot. Mm -hmm. Watching people inside the church, I'm like, okay, you know, just just as a kid, I just mm -hmm. have a habit of watching, watching my surroundings. And I, and I told my dad, I said, why is he using these words, these big words or whatever? And he said, son, he's watching everybody else. Amen. How they preach. Mm -hmm. Then I would see some like, ah! And God. some people running across this. I see one young cat. I was saying one cat. One young man hop over the pews. And I'm like, okay. Now the people are like, oh, yeah. Uh, and I was like, what are you talking about? I don't know, man. But he was excited. But well, we had church today. You don't know what he said. <laughs> but we're supposed to say something to you that would help you along during the week. Yeah. 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 And he said, he said, son, Jesus was able to, when you read the scriptures, he said, son, he talked to where everybody could understand. Yes, hallelujah. Even the little children. Yes. The poor people. Yes. The people who didn't have that, that, that education yeah. as some of us think we should have. Yes. So they brought me back to wondering how did my great, great Grandparents understand what well, sometimes that I knew that some of them couldn't even read, some of them didn't go to school. Amen. But that's how God, when you ask God and tell him, Lord, I need your help, I need your understanding. Yes. That's what He's the only one Amen. that can open up your understanding. Amen. Amen. I don't care how much school you go to. Yes. I was talking to somebody and they said, you know what? I think it was my father in law. That you go to school, get all this understanding and knowledge. Man. And when you get on the work field, have those 75% of the things that you were taught, uh -huh. you don't even use. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All that money you pay, yes. and you still owe. Because uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I have members that went to college and everything, degrees and all this stuff, and they've been out of college for years. Mm -hmm. He's like, Pastor, I got about 15 more years to pay for this law. 15 more years? <laughs> He had all this information that people would have gave you. Yes. And all of a sudden you get the job and you don't use none of that information. Amen. My father barely graduated high school. Uh -huh. And I know this because he told me, but if, if he never would have told me, I would I God no, what is it? You would have thought that he was a had several doctorate degrees. Amen. When it came to the word, he knew the Bible inside and out. <clears throat> there was one time he went to some kind of seminar, and there was hundreds of these big, uh, 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 heavy educated pastors and counselors and everything there. Bishop West was just sitting there, and he asked, the, they, asked they, they threw out a question, and then he asked, he answered the question, and they threw a question on top of the question. Mm. And some of the members of the, I, didn't, I wasn't there, but some of the members said, your dad, when he threw the question, said several other men, oh my goodness, sir, we're going to have to come back to you. That's, <laughs> and everybody was like, yeah, that's a good question. And they came, the same people that was giving the seminar came to him and started picking his brain, asking him, what school did you go to? Where'd you get this? He said, I didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. I prayed and asked God for this. Amen, amen. At the time that he took to ask God, and all the knowledge that he had, he still was humble. Amen. Right. 
See, that's where we go wrong. Yeah. Just like this Pharisee. Uh -huh. We think we're it. Yeah. Because of titles and what man say. Yes. But when you read the word of God, we're nothing but dust. Amen. The scripture says he is a potter and we are what? The clay. Amen. Other people are saying that you're a mistake mm -hmm. and you're this and that. With God, he don't see no flaws. Because his work that he's done in you, mm -hmm. is per is, it will be perfected. Yes, yes. It's just a process you have to go through. So true. Hallelujah. But this man, this publican, again, all he kept saying, Lord, I just need you to... It is said this, but I'm, I'm just paraphrasing. Lord, I want you to look down on me. Yes. Forgive me for the things that I have done. Yes. I'm a sinner. Yeah. I need help. Yes. I need major help. Yeah. I'm trying to just live my life day by day. Yes. I want your covering. Yes. I want your protection. My people in this church, I need you to bless as I walk up and down this street. Yeah. How many innocent people and leave from their home, hmm. things happen, get robbed, shot, whatever else. Yeah. Innocent people. Yeah. Amen. But God blesses us every single day and we don't show no kind of gratitude. Amen. Last night, me and my wife was taking the pastor out of his home. He lived way out in Lake Elsinore. Mm -hmm. Pastor Kim, just so excited about the day and whatever else, I forgot to check it for gas. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> And sometimes I want you to know what I mean? You need to check with us. Well, we will make it. We will make it. And we will. This is what it is. And normally times I will see how many miles I have on the car. Uh -huh. I didn't even check. I just saw this. Woo, it was a beautiful day. We were so fancy. <laughs> Took him home. We talked a little bit. Saw my little cousin at the house. We laughed and talked and whatever. No, I dropped him off. Now I was showing the pictures up on the, in the, in the phone. On my phone. And I looked at I said, <coughs> so a little yellow white, I said, oh Lord, ain't got no gas. So I turned the car off. I said, we cut it off, so it's not gonna make it to the <laughs> to the gas station. <laughs> now here I go again, praying, Lord. <laughs> I walk across the avenue, I'm like, Lord, please bless us. Bless us. Because you go down so far, it's nothing. It's like it's a dirt, winding road, like a country road. I said, Lord, bless us. Bless us. He just talking about like, yeah, All right, all right, man, all right. I'm trying to, like, let me do her get in the house. So I get into the gas. Now, no matter how fast I get in the house, I still ain't got no gas. Amen. But I'm trying to rush him in the house. I'm like, Lord, Father, Jesus. Bless you. He said, Yeah, Pastor, everything all right? I said, Oh, yeah, everything is all right. In my mind. No, it's not. <laughs> then I kept, I kept saying, You should ask him for gas. You know, I'm like, Man, I just drove all this far. Man, I ain't got no gas. Oh, Lord, man. Get in the car. And it starts up riding on fumes. I've done it many times. We ride and in my mind I'm like, I gotta speed up so I can get out of this dark area. And you ain't got no gas any time to be speed. I'm speeding. And get around and say, I said, oh Lord Jesus. First lady, what's wrong? I said, I already do have no gas. But to tell your wife, said, oh, honey, we got no gas. And I already know what you're going to say. Honey, why are you talking about gas? Kill, all that you can do is shut up and just listen. And she's right. Amen, amen. Look, y'all be upset, paranoid, man. And I try to, and then these new cars, you try to push it. It's a push start. Yeah. So you push it. Some cars, other cars, you turn it, it'll, it'll start up, and then you can go a little bit. Push starts, I find out, all it's going to do is just come and <laughs> waste more gas. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, stop it. I said, I'm about to stop it, and it's constantly going. I said, oh, Jesus, stop I said, let me call Triple H. She said, did you, did you pay it up? I said, yeah. <laughs> it took it out of my account. I don't care if I didn't try to, they they, they going to get their money. But it's still, I'm still praying because where we were, see, I was parked halfway on, not halfway, but so far on the on the road uh -huh. instead of like all the way on the shoulder. Yeah. I just, I'm sitting there 
there trying to be calm, you know, so that she could be calm. And I don't know what, because she was in the back. I don't know, I was, she was sleeping on under there, but I was hoping she was asleep. And I, was, <laughs> I kept trying to look back in that mirror. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. Yeah. But I kept praying. Amen. And I said, Lord, I just said, Lord, I thank you for your protection. Amen. And I kept laughing. And once the triple A came and he, yeah, you know, pumped the gas and do this and whatever else, I said, Lord, I thank you. Amen. How my whole mindset changed yeah. about you and the mm. church. Amen. Amen. See, you have a good a relationship with God. Yeah. People, see, years ago, where I come from, pastor used to try to force this down your throat. Yeah. You got to, if you don't do this, you go to hell. If you don't do this, mm. pastors can't force you to do anything. Yeah. They can try, a lot of times, they can be a hindrance. Yes, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. You have to read the word of God for yourself. Yeah. You have to study the word for yourself. Yeah. yeah, there's Bible class, but guess what? You have to read during the week. Yeah. You have to pray during the week. Yeah. It's easy for me to say it down because of what I've been through. Yeah. See, your experiences that you yeah. go through yeah. bring about a change. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm. And the other night, people are talking about my, 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 uh, my brother was playing work and he said, Pastor West, a pastor? Man, I, <laughs> Bishop don't know what he's doing. <laughs> because, how they say, I, I was a, uh, uh, <laughs> I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, like those, that Pharisee. Uh -huh. I came to church, paid my tithes, uh -huh. tried to help my dad as much as I can, and my mom. Because my mindset was, I'm not going to let nobody, nobody, anybody outdo me with my parents. Amen, yeah. amen. So I tried to do, so in my mindset, I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. But my heart was not at the church. Amen. Mm -hmm. My mindset was like, they say be here at some certain time, I'm going to be there. Then all of a sudden, once that time is over, they tell me, I ain't got time to clean up. I'm bigger than everybody else. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm a manager of a bank. But the corporate office, I, I do this, I do that. I ain't got time to. Y'all do that, they call me later. <laughs> I hear about it later on. Anything bad happen? My father kept saying, son, so did this happen? I'm like, oh man, I should you should have been there, son. But your mindset was somewhere else. <laughs> See, God wanna build a, He wants to have a relationship with him. Amen, you know? amen. Now, putting the people first, I'm trying to please the people first because I got a status, I got this, I got that. Because God uses anybody. Yes, yes. He was showing us in this prayer that even though he had the status, I honor this man right here. Amen. This low man right here. Amen. Because he humbled himself. Yes. It's about humility. Yes. That's what, that's what God wants. Mm. He want a broken down heart. Yeah. Amen. He want after he blesses you, he wants you to say thank you. Yes, thank you. While he's making a way out of no way for you, he wants you to honor him, yeah. not to say look what I did. Hallelujah. I went to school and this is what I. Mm -hmm. God allowed it to happen to you. Amen. 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 One thing I know. And I've seen, and we all seen, everybody who gets a board on TV, well, well no. Yes. <laughs> I was about to say 75%, but that ain't say 50%. I would say 50%. Of uh, the entertainers or whoever else, I, think, I want to thank God first Amen. for what he's done. Even though they live a dirty life. Amen. But now at this opportunity, I know it was because of me. Hmm. It wasn't because the producer and everybody else. They gonna thank God first because God allowed this to happen. Amen. Now the producers and my mama and everybody else, I thank them. Mm -hmm. But they recognize it where the blessing comes from. Amen. That's what God wants. Mm -hmm. But then He still wants us to honor Him by the way we live our life yes. every single day. Yes. All right. Because you don't know who's watching you. Hallelujah. Just like that Pharisee sitting up there coming to God, asking God for help. But really, he looking at the other guy, trying to tell him, look, Lord, look at him. He's a sinner, he's this, he's that. Amen. Now he come up here trying to get help. <laughs> Guess what? You're a sinner too, because you got separation.
about your spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You think you that? Mm -hmm. So let us humble ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what God wants. He wants to have a humble spirit. Not just when we really need him, but every single day. Every day. Hallelujah. And Galatians is talking about the fruit of the spirit. And to break it down to love, long suffering, mm -hmm. all these little different things, which is characteristics of that one fruit. Mm -hmm. Some say it's the fruits of the spirit. No, mm -hmm. it's the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's like you have an apple. Mm -hmm. and on the apple, there's several different parts of the apple. You got the core, you got the skin, you got the meat, you got the seeds, you got the steel. So that's what it's talking about. It's the fruit of the spirit. Amen. And in that fruit, it's different characteristics that we should have. Mm. Like I said, we should have, and I'm still trying to get some of those. Amen. But that long song. <laughs> well, <coughs> we should have those characteristics. Amen. Now, people who suck white they're gonna say. It's a long time. You know, he's been doing this for 20 years. Don't make no difference how long it takes. Amen. It's a process. Amen. Right. See, we still have trying to watch people tell you, well, they've been coming to for 10 years. They've been doing this and that, whatever. So what? Amen. They're trying. Amen. It's a process. We grow. It's a process as we grow. Amen. And God is the one that, if we step honor and let him, guess what? He's going to take us through and he's going to put us up. Yeah. The ones who are, who put themselves up, mm. you're gonna put them down mm -hmm. to where they're gonna honor you. Mm -hmm. See the growth? It will get better. Amen. Amen. Uh, so I'm saying, yeah, it's, no, it's gonna get better. Amen. We just gotta have the patience to wait on God. Yeah. God bless you all. Amen.